Sam Ocas, Editor-in-Chief of Nation's Restaurant News, here with Jeff Alexander, President and CEO of Wow Bao. Jeff, welcome. Thank uh, you. You guys are here at the show because you are trying to license your product, your virtual brands, to folks. Tell us about these virtual brands, this dark kitchen, as you call it, that you guys have launched in the last couple of years. Yeah, thank you. So, uh, prior to COVID, we had the idea to sell our food to other restaurants for them to do third-party delivery. And we were very fortunate in the last 24 months, we've launched over 600 locations, US and Canada. We're very close to turning on Mexico and the United Kingdom. And we decided to have a booth here at the show as virtual restaurants continue to become very popular. We thought it'd be a great way to introduce our product and our program to more operators. And uh, it's been a tremendous response we've gotten, not only from operators in America, Colombia, the Caribbean's been talking to us, uh, the Far East is talking to us. We also have a consumer packaged goods product that is being picked up by a number of people around the country who want to start selling that. Universities have been visiting us, sports stadiums have been visiting us, airport concessionaires are visiting us, which wasn't even on my radar when we had this idea. So it's yeah. been very exciting for us these last couple of days. And why has that been so successful? What, what is it about this model that is working so well and attracting so many people? Yeah, so our product is Asian food. Most people can't cook Asian food. Uh, it's, it's considered a little harder to do. Yeah. It's also the second most popular delivery food after pizza. And we have cracked the, the code on how to make it easy for operators. If you can boil water, all of our product is steamed. Mm. We have national distribution of the product. We have brand recognition of a 19-year-old brand that people can recognize, has a soul, a story. We sort of have all the pieces of the puzzle that allow operators to turn us on literally with no capital expenditure, no additional labor, because all you're doing is boiling water, and a name recognition brand that allows it to grow at a very fast rate. Yeah. All right, so you guys were really on top of this before the pandemic, but virtual brands have, of course, become a lifesaver for a lot of restaurants. Tell me about the last couple of years and the success that you have had, but also has it been a struggle at all? Because competition, I must be really tough, and the third-party delivery services and being able to you know make sure Wow Bao is is found. How do you deal with all of that? Yeah, so it, it's it, it, the evolution of the last 24 months of the virtual dining space has been incredible to watch and be part of. Uh, and there's been a lot, there's been ups, there's been downs, there's been highs, there's been lows, and you bring up really good points for us. Being Asian food is something that no other virtual restaurant company out there really is able to offer. You know, there's some rice things here, or some bowl dishes, but the true Asian flavors, again, is not a skill set that a lot of operators have. It's definitely not replicable to go out there. And again, we can provide that. So that's been that's been really the been the main difference between us and other people who are doing this. As far as the third parties go, it started off when the pandemic hit that they, in my opinion, saved the restaurant industry, right? Yeah. Everyone had to do delivery, no one could functionally do delivery, yeah. and third party allowed everyone to, to go and make it work. Now as the space is becoming saturated with more people on the platforms, more virtual restaurants coming up, everyone's fighting for market share. Yeah. And the market share really hasn't developed into how you get that done. I think we have uh, a, a leg in front of everybody because we've been with the third parties as they've been trying to figure this out, as they've been growing, so we have an in with them, we have an understanding with them, we have a great relationship with them. But people who are new to the marketplace, how do you get found? And that's really, I, I can't give you the secret sauce, or, or your listeners a secret <laughs> sauce, right? We need to keep that. Yeah. But uh, it's definitely, that is the number one struggle. When we open up in Fargo, North Dakota, and no one's ever heard of Wow Bow, how do you get them to choose you or find you on the third party? That is, that is what has to be done. And we do stuff with the operator on the ground, boots on the ground, guerrilla marketing, press releases when we enter those markets. We do uh, 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 social media advertising and blasts. And then again, with this relationship with the third parties we have, there's additional things that we can do to get in front of the, con the consumer. What we've been seeing from the numbers now are that the dine-in experience has really come back. I mean, full service restaurants are actually doing very well right now. Uh, people want to get out and experience restaurants. Do you see a pullback on virtual sales at all, or is that uh, going to continue to be a, a successful so trend? So I'm not shaking my head yes to you about <laughs> yes, we see a pullback. I'm shaking my head because I understand the question. Yeah. Uh, it's funny, everybody wants to talk about, we're coming out of the pandemic, is it the end of virtual, mm. right? As restaurants are coming back, is no more delivery. And I firmly believe we are at the beginning of what's going to become something here. This is, everyone's like, oh, we've been doing it for two years. The cycle has just started. Yeah. We haven't even, we haven't even scratched the surface 
of where virtual restaurant and virtual dining is going to go. Look, Uber Eats, DoorDash, Grubhub, these companies have a lot of money and a lot of smart people. It's not over. And uh, are we seeing a pullback? No, we're not seeing a pullback. When we started this, remember, we started in November of 2019, yeah. pre-COVID. And our idea was we could help the mom and pop coffee shop that only had two day parts. Mm -hmm. We could help the ice cream store that four months out of the year, no one's buying ice cream from. We could help the, the in-house room service at a hotel who has a full room service staff but everyone's going out to eat. Mm -hmm. And we could help the, 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 the catering company that has one order and then sits dormant the rest of the night or week. And so we built it as a way to get incremental sales for these other businesses. That does not go away, everybody everybody has capacity. Yeah. Nobody is saying, ah, I have enough sales. I don't need any more sales. <laughs> everybody has room to do it. Yeah. The trick is it has to be easy. It has to be sustainable. It has to be good. And look, we, as a, as a brand of many years, our packaging works, our flavor profile works, our story works, and that's what's going to give longevity. If you just created a brand yesterday, it might not stay, or yeah. you might not want to deal with it, but for us, we can give a package to people that gives them a 40% plus return on their sales that they're driving for this. Yeah. It's not a small number. Right. So if you have capacity, if you're making money, why would you turn it off? Why yeah. wouldn't you push it? So yeah. that's why it's going to continue. You say we're at the start of something here. So see that out into the future. Where does this all settle with between on-premises experiences, off-premises, the digital ordering, the need states of the customer, where do you see all this going? Well, well I don't have the crystal ball. I didn't bring it, you didn't tell me <laughs> no. to bring it for the interview. But the, what, I, what I do believe is, look, when I eat out at home, my wife and I don't always agree on what to order in. Sure. Nine out of 10 times, I give in, right? Sometimes <laughs> I get that husband. one, right? That's why we're still together. <laughs> yeah. Sometimes I get what I want. But it's going to evolve into a marketplace where you can get this, this, and this, and it will come together. It won't be four different delivery drivers showing up three hours apart. That's going to happen. We launched, uh, last week, we launched a, a rewards program for people. If they order through wowbow.com, they can get points on their meal because we're trying to continue the connection with the, with the guest. We want them to be choosing wowbow. We want to continue the conversation offline with them, and we want them to connect to us because trust is what you get at the hospitality level when you go out to eat and dine. Right. When you order in, that trust, that communication, that dissipates and that changes the dynamic. We want to enhance that and bring it back and raise the level of hospitality. And I think what we started, we're not going to be the only ones doing it, we're just first to the party. Yeah. You're going to see rewards and loyalty, you're going to see new ways to order. I mean, drone delivery exists, it's yeah. being done right now. And yeah. Six months ago, we were all like, ha ha, that'll never happen. The autonomous driving that's going to be coming. There's going to be different ways. The robots that are going around college campuses. When you think about the, the world 12 months from now, it is where we've come in the last 12 months is like decades of evolution in 12 yeah. months. Yeah. And we are on that trajectory and continued path. So where do I think it's going to be? I'm not going to tell you. I'm going to tell you it's going to be very exciting. Mm -hmm. It's going to be really something special and this the the virtual segment and brick and mortar will continue to grow brick and mortar is not going anywhere but brick and mortar is going to have to up its game right now we're all paying higher wages we're all labor uh, uh, we're short on labor and we're paying unbelievable prices for commodities we're not delivering the product to the consumer that offsets the cost that we're charging for the stuff so what operators in restaurants brick and mortar need to do is they need to get back to being on the floor and talking to consumers and it is going to enhance that relationship in a way that we probably haven't seen for the last five or ten years in restaurants because we were all just doing so great right, right. so it's going to be very exciting in that field and what's going on here and the last field that i think is going to be great is this is going to go into airports and concessions in ways we haven't thought about wreath kitchens is launching now in raleigh durham where they're running X amount of virtual restaurants inside the airport so you can walk up and order all these different foods. That's going to continue to go. Yeah. College campuses are now doing late night virtual dining to send food out across the campus. It's, it's so fun what's going on right now. I want to go back to that idea of the loyalty because you also talked about the importance of the third party delivery 
But I know a lot of the frustration with third-party delivery is that you don't own that relationship with the customer. Right. How does that all play out? Because ideally, if you you want them to order through WowBow, loyalty program, you don't want them to go to the third party. Right. So how is this going to work out? It's a great question. I'm sorry I didn't cover that. So our, our loyalty program, we're doing it as a rewards program, not loyalty, because it's different. Loyalty, you're coming all the time. Delivery doesn't work that way. So we're doing it as a reward. Spend $100, get 100 points, get $7 free. Mm -hmm. It only works on wowbow.com. Wowbow.com is linked to DoorDash Storefront, which is a platform that DoorDash provides where when the order comes through our website, we collect the customer data. We now have the communication to market to them, work with them, and, and build that relationship. So it's not available for third party across the board. You have to come through my channel to get part of that program. And we hope to grow that channel, right? I mean, everyone goes to the marketplace right now. So Uber, and DoorDash, and Grubhub, they own the customer. They own all the business. They do all the sales. We're trying to move the consumer from there to a path where we can be in the conversation. Sure. And we think the loyalty is the way to do that, or the reward, it's not, even I'm saying it wrong. <laughs> we want that to be the way to go. Yeah, it makes sense. All right, so obviously this is going so well for you that you have launched another virtual concept. Tell us about that. Thank you, so we partnered with a consumer packaged good product called Skinny Butcher, which is a plant-based chicken. They do nuggets, tenders, and breasts. They're selling it in Costco and Walmart, uh, Safeway, they have a whole uh, grocery line. We partner with them and we're running a virtual brand for them where we're taking those same items and creating a menu that has sa sandwiches and salads and entrees, putting it on third party. And secondly from that, we've now made it available for restaurants to buy the product through distribution and just put it on their menu as a meat alternative. So if you're a fried chicken concept or a chicken concept or a burger concept, and you want to offer a plant substitute, you can order Skinny Butcher through your Broadliner mm -hmm. and just have this one menu item to offer, which is at a higher check average. Our product is pea protein, not soy based, so it's better for you than the other product that's out there. The exact same mouthfeel and texture of real chicken. We call it crazy crispy chicken because it's double breaded. It comes to you already fried, frozen, ready to go, just put in a fryer, it's fantastic. Mm -hmm. And uh, our goal is, if you bring the product in as a virtual, you'll sell it on your menu. If you bring it in for the menu, you'll try the virtual. So yeah. it's really, it's got great legs. And here at the show, we're hearing it's really on par, if not superior, than what the other product is out there. So we're very successful so it and seems, excited. It seems like what you're doing here is building a portfolio of virtual concepts. Is that what you're uh, doing? You probably can't read it. Oh, here well, we, we go. named ourselves Eclipse Partners, right. and we got a list of our brands now. And, uh, Eclipse Partners, it, it's, it's funny. We had this idea where we do dark kitchens and the idea of a dark kitchen versus virtual and ghost is we're saying there's area of your restaurant that's dark mm. and we can bring light to that area and turn the lights back on and have money flow through it. We all have capacity. So we thought of Eclipse as the darkness of the sun, but then the sun gets to come back through as the Eclipse moves forward. Ah. So we went with Eclipse Partners where we are creating brands that can help you in your area of your restaurant. So you're gonna to have to keep them coming down. We are. Sleep. I hope my goal is to run out of arm space and have to get a full body suit uh. and do the legs, but that's that'll come. And so I assume then the relationship with your uh, customers of who are gonna serve that product, they can just pick and choose the concepts. That, that would they be the idea. Serve out of the kitchen. You know, we're going with a partner. We have people who've been doing Wowbow for over two years now, 107 weeks, 110 weeks, and we're going to them and say, success. Here's something different. Now, the difference is with Wowbow, it's only steam. You boil water, you can serve it. Skinny Butcher requires either an oven, a, sorry, a, a, a turbo chef or a fryer. Okay. So it's a little bit more work on that side of it as opposed to just Wowbow Go, but there are operators who can make this work and we're excited to work with sure. them. It seems like some of this is a, a solution to a lot of the headwinds facing the industry today, right? I mean, we're facing supply chain issues, inflation, labor. Like what you guys are making is all about efficiency, which is where yes. a lot of restaurants are today, right? So are there any hiccups? Are there any challenges that you're you facing? I mean, there's always challenges. One of the things we say to operators is, there's the old adage that 80% of your sales come from 20% of your menu. Right. So if you have a 30 item menu, you could lose 10 items. Mm. Unfortunately, there's that one customer who comes every six months who's like, why'd you take off the menu? But you can lose those 10 items or five items and bring in a virtual brand us, your own, someone else's, and now you're going to create a whole revenue line without creating a lot of extra work, right? right? 
So we think that's a real good way to make operators go. And for your question about headaches and whatever it may be, we've been very fortunate. We have not seen a supply chain issue. We've actually gone from pre-pandemic of one manufacturer of our product to now we have five. And we have plenty of product and distribution. So we've been very fortunate. Labor is always going to be a problem. Labor was a problem pre-pandemic. Right. It's just at a different level right now. And again, for us, all of our training's online. Our product, again, is boiling water, so you, anybody should be able to do this. It really comes down to the restaurant industry has always been the hardest hit when any crisis comes. Yep. But we are resilient, and we face up to the challenge, and we evolve, and we innovate, and we come back better than before. The question is to the operator, do you want to come back? Do you want to be better? And if the answer is yes, which is I believe we all are as entrepreneurs, yeah. you'll find a way to make it work. Yeah. Our parent companies let us entertain you and we have, a, we have a saying in it, the answer is yes, the question is how. Yeah. And if you use that as the mantra, you will have the solution. Yeah. Will it be hard? Absolutely. Will there be headaches? Absolutely. Yeah. But there is a way to get there. Yeah. Well, last question for you, Jeff, is what, what, what about the restaurant industry generally right now is getting you excited? Where do you see the opportunity for this industry? You know, I, I think the most exciting thing for this is just the, the collaboration. Pre-pandemic, everybody that I sort of felt, we were very siloed, right? This is my recipe, I'm not sharing with you. It, it, anybody can make anything, mm -hmm. but it's the soul and the integrity behind it. It's the people, it's our frontline workers that separate us. During the pandemic, we all had to come to the table and share ideas. Mm. I'm facing this, how are you doing with that? How are you, you know, limited hours, what are you doing? We became very collaborative. We started sharing stuff. Virtual dining now, we're all sharing recipes and ideas. The collaboration that has come out of the last 24 months, I believe will stick. Mm. I believe that the open doors that we're doing for one another, the, the fact that we're, we're all caring for the success of one another, that I think is what is so exciting yeah. because that is going to allow the technology to improve. That's going to allow the supply chain to get better. That's going to allow people sharing, right? It, it's just, it, it, it's very cool about that. And we're all going to be willing to take on things we weren't able to do before. Yeah. Some of us would be like, I'm never going to try drones, right? They're going to fall on people's heads. And I, we're all going to try this oh, stuff yeah. now. Yeah, yeah. And we're all going to share the feedback. So I, I think that's very cool. It's exciting to watch. Jeff Alexander of Wabow, uh, Eclipse Partners, Eclipse I should Partners, say. Eclipse Partners, thank you. Thanks for joining us today. Appreciate it, thanks, Sam.